All right, guys, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you watching. Um, last week started off just fine. Uh, I went to Discount Tire to get the uh, TPMS sensors um, matched with my car since these wheels did not originally come from my car. I will never get tired of that exhaust sound. Anyway, heading over to Discount now to get that taken care of. Alright guys, we are done at discount now. The uh, TPMS sensors match the car so there's no more warning and um, it literally took about a minute. The sky was really cloudy that day, had an ominous kind of look to it. So after I left discount, I went to this uh, place that has kind of like an elevated parking lot. Alright, so I stopped in this parking lot to uh, try to get a good Instagram picture, but I don't think it's going to work so well. Give it a shot. So I don't know how those pictures came out, but we'll see. Um, I'm only using an iPhone, but since there's nobody else in this parking lot, just do a quick walk around. When I was done with that, I came home and did a little bit of maintenance on the Xterra. All right, so with the TPMS sensors fixed and with the Instagram picture out of the way, um, which actually came out pretty good, especially for an iPhone 6S, um, I decided I was going to come home and work on the Xterra a little bit. Actually, I was going to change the oil, but uh, then realized I didn't have an oil filter. So I'm going to hold off on doing that until tomorrow. So then I figured if I'm going to the auto parts store tomorrow, I might as well check the air filter and see if it needs a new one. So I did. It's really dirty, but uh, I found something unusual under the hood, so I'm gonna show you guys now. So I accidentally just said I'm getting a new air filter tomorrow. I meant the oil for the uh, K&N filter, because those are washable, so. It's dirty and uh, definitely needs to be cleaned and then re-oiled, but, uh, man, this engine compartment is so dirty. I definitely need to clean this sometime soon. Here's the unusual thing I found under the hood. Um, here's the coolant overflow tank with the uh, black rubber hose going into it, so. I don't know what's going on here, but you can see that there's a leak or something happening there. So either the hose has a split or the uh, the tank itself has a split. So I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on with this. These dogs around here are driving me crazy. The only dog with quiet is mine. Anyway, before I get going, I just want to let you guys know the car is completely cooled off. It hasn't even been started today, so it's nice and cool. And um, the reason I say that is because these overflow tanks in this system are pressurized and this is just like the radiator cap so if you took that off and it was hot you could possibly get uh, burnt so it's all cooled off and uh, let's get going all right so I'm gonna squeeze this clamp okay so I just cleaned this part off here there's no obvious cracks that I could see um, there's no movement to this piece at all, so I don't think it's it's actually cracked or, or split or anything there, but um, I'm going to check the hose next and see if I can find anything on that. Alright, so with the clamp off and the hose cleaned, I don't see any obvious splits, so um, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Potentially right there there's something, but uh, that could be where the clamp was too. So I think what I'm going to do is just um, split this. Anyway, my next step is I'm just going to cut this hose and then, because uh, if there is a split, it's somewhere right here, and then just reclamp it right here. All right, so before I cut the hose, I just put the clamp back on. All right, so the hose is cut now. I'm going to try to feed it back on here. All right, that was kind of a pain. All right, so the hose is back in place. Clamp is on. Hopefully that solves the problem. And if it doesn't, then we know it's the, uh, the nipple coming off the tank. Okay, so the next issue is somehow my battery slid over to the left a little bit. So I'm going to loosen these, center it, and then uh, tighten it again. 
I know it looks like my battery might be leaking or something, but I don't think it is. I think that was the antifreeze coming out of here, um, possibly blowing over in this direction and uh, getting on top of the battery. I'm not sure. This, this is the original battery for this car, and it's a 2013, so I'm actually surprised I haven't had to change it yet. Okay, so I'm going to take the X-Tyro for a little drive now, let it heat up for a little bit, and uh, come back and check and see if there's any sign of a leak over here. Alright guys, X-Tyro cold start. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, I just realized it's January 27th, and uh, that is not a good day for me. When I was a lot younger, that's the day I busted up my lip, uh, knocked out my two front teeth playing hockey so anyway this day is always kind of a little bit weird for me but anyway for anybody wondering this is a pioneer app radio 3 and um i just i ran the uh, usb cable out the top here and this mounted on one of those um i think they're called ram mounts or something anyway it works excellent because you can obviously see the screen there right in front of you so you don't ever have to take your eyes off the road all right, so I know it's a little unusual to have two TPMS sensor issues in the same day, but um, on this car, they do not need to be reset. These are actually the factory wheels, so um, I did check the tire pressure and that wasn't it. Um, so I think the issue is that they just need new batteries, and uh, or one of them does anyway. But this car is due for a tire rotation, so next time I bring it over to discount, I'll have them check it out. Man, as much as I like driving a 370, I really love this Xterra. It's been such a good car. But uh, anyway, we are warmed up now, so let's get back to the garage. All right, so everything looks nice and dry. I'm just gonna keep my eye on it over time and see if there's any signs of leakage, but uh, hopefully that's fixed. By the way, these are the uh, 25 millimeter Z1 Motorsports spacers I took off my car when I put the factory wheels back on. They're really nicely made, and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it says Z1 Motorsports right there. They're aluminum. They're still, they still got some weight to them, though. I don't know. I want to say they're probably about five pounds each or something. Anyway, they're nicely made. I think I'm just going to put them on Craigslist because I have no use for them anymore, but at least you guys can see what they look like. 25 millimeters is pretty thick. And then it happened. <sighs> Crap. All right, so here's our mat. I took all the plastic trim off the hatch and tightened every bolt. I put this weather stripping behind every piece of wiring so there's no more rattles or vibrations. I even ran a thin piece of um, soundproofing down this hole all the way to here because the wire that runs up here and comes out here is vibrating on the inside of this. So I put this here as just a temporary fix just to see if that would uh, change it at all. It gets thicker as it goes down, and I also put some foam tape in there. But if that turns out to be the culprit, then I'm gonna put uh, that spray foam, I'll cover up these holes with tape, and then I'll put some spray foam down in there to hold that wire in place. Okay, so on the bottom part, I have the back piece out again, unfortunately, and this side piece. Somebody in the forum mentioned that um, this part right here, which I have covered in some foam tape now, which is actually the latch for the uh, gas cap cover, this piece here, was causing their rattle. So I'm going to give that a shot. I also took my tail light out because I noticed that, um, well, maybe I could just show you. It's probably going to be hard to tell here, but If I had two hands was holding that up, it's, it's rattling quite a bit. So I'm going to tighten everything, all these little screws, and uh, the sockets themselves, or the plugs rather, going until the lights aren't making any sound. So I don't know. I'm just getting so freaking aggravated with this. But like I said the last time, I'm not going to let it uh, beat me. <laughs> 
we'll get it. So the tail light's back in, and um, I still have some foam pieces here from uh, the first time I was trying to find the rattle because um, this piece here was vibrating. Eventually, um, when I figure out the ultimate source of the rattle, I'm going to go back and take out the foam pieces on stuff like that. That uh, wasn't really part of the problem. All right, so the weather stripping's back in. I'm going to go on a little test drive again. And um, I already know this piece is going to vibrate a little. I know what that one sounds like, but the uh, the new rattle had a had a different sound to it, so that's the one I'm trying to fix right now. One other thing I'm going to do before I go on the test drive is adjust this locking mechanism for the hatch um, right here. Loosen these two bolts, and you push down on it, and it's only going to move a little bit. But th the goal is to to pull the hatch lid, um, you know, tighter to this gasket here. So I'll give that a shot and see. If what happens. Okay, so these two bolts here are 12 millimeter. I loosened them and then pushed down on the uh, the mechanism. And then I actually had to adjust it a couple of times because uh, the first time I tried to open the hatch, um, it didn't pop up. So anyway, don't go too far, but uh, every car might be different. But anyway, it's tight now. And uh, as you can see, if I push down, there's very, there's very little movement now. There used to be a lot more. So I don't think I want to bring it any closer than that. All right, so I'm back. That was completely unsuccessful, and uh, everything I just tried accomplished nothing. So um, somebody said press up on the headliner right where it meets the back here, and uh, I did that, and that didn't change anything. I pressed all over the headliner, actually. Nothing changed there, so um, I'm not sure. But, you know... I think I understand now why Nissan's, uh, even on the Nismo, why the uh, factory exhaust is so quiet. Alright, so here's the latest with this situation. It's uh, Friday evening. Today was a pretty crummy day in the stock market, so came home, tore the inside of my car out again to take my mind off of things, and uh, just figured once and for all I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So, basically I'm just going to start over and um, see if I could figure this out. It's supposed to be raining this weekend, so it's a good time to, uh, to work on this. So If I can't find it this time, then um, I've already made up my mind that I'm just going to put the stock exhaust back on. It's really not worth the hassle, so hopefully I can find it. Alright guys, I'm picking this up where I left off last night. It's now Saturday afternoon, and uh, we finally found the source of the rattle, so I'm putting my car back together, but if you remember in the very first rattle video, um, I had taken this part out and there was like a bar and then a, a plastic uh, activator here, or actuation device, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So um, that was rattling and then I put the, the, the soundproofing inside of this area here and then on the back of the plastic piece and it covered it up pretty good. Um, but I think what had happened is, I think what was deceiving because I always thought the sound was coming from here and I thought this area was solved and I just think the way it was the way these holes are and the way this is open over here it made it sound like it was coming from that area so what you have inside there now um, I took out the this is the plastic motor that's inside um, this section right here and I'm not gonna be able to do it but this is gonna be too hard to but that thing, that's rattling like crazy. You can hear it there. So what I'm going to do um, for now, I'm going to put the car back together. And then there's the um, the cable release here you can do manually, which is it's kind of a pain, but um, it's good enough for now. I don't open this area that much anyway. But in the meantime, I'm going to take this apart and um, put a bunch of grease in there. And that will hopefully solve all the, the rattle problems and I'll put it back in. So this is the harness for that which is just temporarily laying there. Um, so anyway, that, that was the rattle. And uh, like I said, this is where it all started to begin with. And it's now where it's ending. So putting the car back together, it's, I'm, I'm thrilled that we finally reached this to this point, but um, I'm aggravated that it took now almost two months to, to get to this point. So whatever. I think Nissan could have spent you know a little bit of money on some freaking dynamite or something for this area here. There's not even undercoating on the bottom of the car, so everything is, you know, it's super loud. But anyway, um, just so you guys know, somebody mentioned, and I think I mentioned this already in the video, but um, this is the part that opens up the gas tank, 
or the gas uh, cover. Uh, this thing, whatever it's called, cover for the gas cap. And uh, that was definitely rattling, um, but it wasn't the source of my rattle. But I put tape on, on pretty much everything in this car that had some sort of rattling. I put this, this foam underneath it, and uh, I really didn't have to do any of that because, um, like I said, it was all right here. I also adjusted this lock, and, um, you know, that, that wasn't the cause. And um, I tightened the third brake light. That wasn't the problem either, so... I did everything that you guys had mentioned in the forums and um, finally found the solution. So if you can't find your rattle problem, it could be this little motor right here that unlatches the uh, the hatch. But anyway, putting the car back together now and uh, then I'm going to go on a nice peaceful ride without being aggravated. So the car's back together mostly. Um, hey, that's my favorite dog. I got to do a couple more fasteners. I'm going to leave this piece off tonight, the trim piece, because uh, I'm going to work on that plastic uh, actuator switch or whatever it's called tonight. Put it back in tomorrow, and uh, hopefully I never have to take this stuff out ever again. Yeah, it's kind of hard to hold this camera and drive. Rattle's fixed, and I put my car back together, and I'm going to work on this part now, and hopefully we can get rid of the rattle inside of it. Um, it's really hard to tell, but once this is inside the car, uh, it just vibrates like crazy. So anyway, I just took the screws off, and I'm going to get this cover off. There was obviously some grease already in here. Alright, so it seems like that gear is the only part that's rattling. I don't know if it comes off or not. It does. Well, that's rattling too. Okay, so these three pieces were the ones that were rattling. Everything else in here is pretty good. So I took some grease from my grease gun and just put it. Sorry, I can't really see what I'm filming. I just put it on the cover here. And um, I'm just going to pack it in here pretty good. There's a some kind of circuit board under here so stay away from that part I'm guessing this is something that's going to have to be done about once a year if I don't want to deal with rattles alright so this piece goes this piece goes on there you can see the the Nissan grease that was on there. It's not very much of it. Let me get a paper towel here. There's like a little notch right here, and that's the position it was in. So then, I don't know what that does, but that was just laying just like that. Actually, Put some grease on top of that too because that was vibrating also. I took a picture of this before I took it apart, so I'm going to double check it, but that was sitting just like that. There's like a little tab underneath the gear, and um, at least there was a grease pattern on here. So let me look at the picture real quick and see how that was lined up. Alright, so the gear is back in place. I have um, probably way too much grease in here, but I don't care. I just don't want it to rattle. Alright, so now I'm just going to put the screws back in. There's a slight vibration to it, but it's nothing like it was, so I think it's um, acceptable. And the mechanism works properly, so I'm going to put it back in the car now and uh, first go wash my hands and then uh, see if it worked. Alright, so I just unbolted the whole piece here and um, this part goes there, gets screwed in, and then this bar connects to this area here. So, let me do that real quick. Alright, so this is a little hard to film, but everything's put back together now. The bar's connected here to the latch. Everything works properly. Okay, so I just connected the wiring harness there and um, of course even that rattles, so I wrapped some of the weather stripping tape around it to get rid of that. So 
And anyway, I think if I have to take this apart again and do this, rather than putting a whole bunch of grease in here, um, on that top gear on the top of it, I might just put like a felt pad or something like that to compress it a little bit. All right, so everything's back in, bolted in place, and um, before, when I used to tap that part right there, it would rattle like crazy, so I think we've uh, we fixed this issue. Now I just gotta see if it works. Super quiet, and it worked. All right, so the rear trim is back in place finally. The weather stripping is back in place, and um, I'm just gonna go take it for a ride just to make sure that uh, it worked. Man, that is so much better, guys. I'm glad I stuck with it, and uh, I'm glad I didn't go back to the stock exhaust. So going through that this past week was a big pain, but uh, finally got it figured out and uh, no more rattles. So I'm happy with the results. So there you have it. It's finally fixed and uh, I'm sure a couple more might creep up along the way, but that was a big one. And what was deceiving about it is even when you were laying in the back of the car and there's a little hole you can reach into to grab that bar that connects those two things together. Um, just grabbing that bar you would think would solve the rattle if that was the case, but it didn't. So the plastic part itself was, was causing the rattle, and that bar had nothing to do with it, which I, all along I thought it did. So anyway, problem finally solved, and uh, hopefully I won't have to do that ever again. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I would definitely appreciate that, and uh, we'll see you next time.